Welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. This is episode six, how to network without being that guy. Hey everybody, this is Will Doggett. Thanks so much for joining me for Behind the Space Bar. Today, we are gonna talk about everyone's favorite subject and topic, networking. And I wanna talk about it specifically about how to network without being that guy. We're gonna talk about three Bs today. Um, so I think today's episode is gonna be super important, particularly if you're newer in your music career, or newer in your career, whatever field that is. Um, and no matter where you're working, whether it's a church on staff as a worship leader, music director, whether you're out on the road as a, a, a music director or musician playing with an artist, or maybe you're a, 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 someone doing production or tech out on the road, no matter what it is, this is a super important topic. I, I think a lot of times when we think about networking, again, we, we think of networking as a four letter word, right? And we always think of networking. We all know that guy. And, uh, and we all know that guy that you show up to a party, you show up to an event and there's that one person that's walking around passing out business cards and you're going, are business cards even a thing anymore? Um, if you've ever been to Nam and you're watching this, you know, that feeling of being, uh, walking around Nam or walking up to a booth, uh, in particular and walking up to a booth and, uh, wanting to learn about a new synthesizer, a new piece of gear. And as you walk up to the booth, the person is doing this and all they're doing is staring at your name tag to go, is this person of any worth or value to me? Uh, and if they're not, I'm going to really quickly try to move them along. And if they are, or I recognize their name tag, um, then I'm going to pay them a lot of attention. In fact, one of the most important and needed times I've, uh, uh ever, ever felt needed or important in my life was, uh, when we were recording, uh, some NAM videos for Sweetwater. And so on my tag, it said, we'll dog it. Uh, I forgot what the role was, but it said Sweetwater. And so you'd walk up to a booth and at first people are like, who's this young punk, this young punk kid? And then they see the name tag and see Sweetwater and suddenly they're they're here to serve whatever they can do to help. But we all know that feeling. And I think sometimes because we've all known the guy that we feel like they're always trying to just get to the next thing. They're always trying to meet the next person. Um, uh, they're passing out their business cards again, if, if, if we even need business cards anymore, but they're, we've all interacted with that person. We've felt that towards us. We felt when people were trying to use us just for our connections and for the people we, we know and the things we can do, we felt that, um, maybe sometimes we've tried to network and, and feeling and, and, and networking, we felt icky and we felt like that guy. And so I think a lot of times the tendency is, well, I'm just not going to do it. If it happens, it happens. So be it. Right. And I don't think that's the right choice. I don't think just because we've seen people do it badly means we should not do it ourselves because I've seen what's happened to me when I uh, get around the right people. I've seen what happens to me when I get in environments and um, doors open for me because I met this person or because I helped this person, then this thing happened, which this thing happened. So networking is a good thing. Networking is an important thing. The the, the jobs we're going to get, the opportunities we're going to get um, are not because of our skill. Now that's part of it, but it's going to be because of the people we know. And I think the reason we feel such a resistance to networking is we've seen it done bad and we've seen it used as a tool where people look straight through you, straight through your soul. And all they see is your name badge at NAM and see exactly where that person works or what band they're with or what artists or how big their social media following is. We've all had that done to us. We've seen it done. And so we think networking is not important, but networking is important. The only things we have, the, the opportunities we're going to get in life are only going to happen um, because of the people we know. So I think networking is super important, but is it possible? Is there a way for us to network, to get opportunities without being that guy? And again, I, I think I've defined who being that guy is. We've all experienced it. So I think there is, I, I want to share, and there's probably way, way more ways than what I'm going to share. I'm going to share three particular. And I said, I'm going to, we're going to talk about the three B's. Um, and this is my, uh, my church, uh, upbringing coming out in me. If I've got to try to start everything and do some alliteration. So that's what we're doing here. I've got three B's for you today, but I would love to know, leave a comment below, um, whether you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Apple podcasts, then shoot me an email, whatever, shoot me a text. If you have my number, I would love to know, um, <clears throat> what things have helped you learn how to network without being that guy. So I want to share the three I thought of that, um, I've experienced in my own life. And then, um, again, let me know what you think. So number one, the first B, be present where you are. I think, um, and I was tempted when I started working on the outline for this and thinking about it <clears throat> is I was tempted to say like, um, you never know what the opportunity you're doing could eventually lead to. And a lot of times I think that's our rationale and our reasoning for why we should network. A lot, I think a lot of times that's the reason why we think, oh, I should go to this event or go to this party because I never know what will come out of this party. The person I might meet might lead to this, might lead to that. <clears throat> I think all those things are true. 
And I think that's a valid thing, but I don't think that should be our intent. I think we should be present wherever we are, which means if we go to a party, we're not thinking about, I need to meet that person because that person could then introduce me to this person that could introduce me to that person. I'm going to be at this party and I'm going to meet this person and I'm going to like look them in the eyes. I'm going to learn their name and I'm going to focus on them in that moment. I'm not going to focus on what they can do for me. I'm not going to focus on um, going and doing this show and what that could potentially lead to. I'm at this show, so I'm going to be at this show. I'm talking to this person, so I'm going to talk to this person. Now, that maybe sounds new agey or sounds like oversimplistic, but I think it's true. A book I'm going to throw out, and I'm throwing out four, three books uh, this week, 4,000 Weeks Time Management for Mortals. This is a really great book, particularly if you're like fed up with time management or if you have any interest in time management, um, but you're kind of like, it all just seems like BS to me. Or maybe you're going, <clears throat> I've tried to do time management stuff, and I just... I'm a hot mess. I'm a soup sandwich. I can't get it together. Uh, this book by Oliver Berkman is, is really, really good. Um, and one of the things Oliver talks about in it is just the idea of us doing something uh, for something else. But he talks about just being in the moment and not going on vacation so that we can learn something to then be better at our jobs, but just to go on vacation, right? Or to as we're doing a, a skill or a hobby, just doing that skill or hobby just for the sake of doing it. So I thought about that when when um, I, when I was working on this outline, I thought about that book because it was a really good, impactful book to remind me of just the idea of just be present where you are. And that's something we hear and it's kind of a buzzwordy thing or whatever, be present. It's very, very possible that the, the person you're talking to could introduce you to someone else that could lead to an opportunity. It's very possible that <clears throat> the opportunity that you're doing um, um, could lead to another opportunity. But the only way that opportunity is going to open up, the only way that person you're talking to is going to introduce you to that next person is if they feel like you're, you actually care about them. And if they feel like you're actually present, you're not, this gig is not going to lead to a better and greater gig. If you don't do this gig well, and you can only do this gig well, if you're present in this gig, if you think about it as if this is the last gig I'm ever going to do, I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to do good work. Um, and you're going to do your best at that thing, then that's going to then potentially lead you to another thing. But if you're only focused on how this thing can serve and as a stepping stone to get to the next thing, then I think you're going to miss the joy of that particular thing. You're going to miss the joy of the destiny of the journey trying to get to the destination, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, I think of my, uh, my buddy Tyler, who just recently, um, got hired to do a gig uh, here in Austin and went and did that gig and it was an okay gig, but as a part of that gig, he got connected to someone else that was, that was working the gig the next day. They started chatting on the phone. This person said, Oh, I'm really involved in the playback, uh, world and environment. And then I think a couple weeks later called Tyler back and said, Hey, I need someone to go out on the road with this artist, uh, for a couple weeks. Are you down? And Tyler said, yeah, that's great. Tyler was able to get that, not because he walked in and said, this gig may lead to something else. And he didn't get it because he walked in in this gig and said, ah, this is like a, you know, on a scale from one to 10, this is like a four, but it pays. It's better than nothing. He went in and said, I'm going to do my best at this thing. And I'm going to treat this thing as if it's the only thing I've got. And because of that, someone was able to look on and see his work ethic, how he works, the great job he did and said, hey, he did a really good job with this. What if we gave him another opportunity to do that? So number one, be present where you are. That's our first B, be present where you are. Um, that thing you may uh, want to do, that person you're talking to may introduce you and lead you to something else. That job, um, that, that particular thing may lead you to something else, but only if you do the current thing you're on really well. Number two, our second B, be present where the people you want to be are. Okay. That's I, that, that. Let me say that again. Cause that's a hard one to, as I was typing, I had to type it a few times, but I, I think it says what I wanted to say. Number two, be present where the people you want to be are. Okay. Be present where the people you want to be are. Here's what I mean. Um, uh, I have a buddy who became a playback tech. And one of the reasons he became a playback tech is he just started hanging out at rehearsal spaces. He started going to where the people that he wanted to be, he wanted to be a playback tech. Where were they? They were at rehearsal spaces rehearsing. So he would just go hang out. Uh, he had some friends that were in a band who would go hang out and they would need help carrying keyboard cases. They needed help um, hauling gear around. And so he would help haul gear around. And when it came time for those people to need someone to do a similar job, guess who they thought of? They thought of my buddy. Um, be present where the people you want to be are essentially just means think about the type of people, the the field you want to be in, where are they and go to those places. Um, maybe you can't physically go, uh, but hang out where those people are on social media. Another thing 
um, I always think of is uh, just this concept of doing work that they notice, right? Um, one of my goals with creating a, a piece of content every single day in 2022 is that if you Google almost anything about Ableton Live, you'll find some piece of my content on that page. Um, and that's just a good business principle. You could say that's icky. You could say, well, Will, you're being that guy. Will, you're concerned with people's perception of you, Will, whatever. But the goal is I'm trying to be where people are, right? I'm trying to be to where when you search for Ableton info, you find Will. And you're like, well, Will's the Ableton guy that's going to help me figure this out. Uh, be present where the people you want to be are. Again, that may be a physical location. Uh, it may be a music club. And so you go and hang out. Uh, and it's probably going to be, and you're not going to want to hear this, but most likely it's going to be a situation where you need to go volunteer. You need to just hang out. You need to just serve, just be near those people um, so that you can learn about that field so that people start to know, oh, he gets it. Oh, she gets it. Like they've been around this world. They understand what we're talking about. Uh, and we say this thing, this is what we mean, that sort of thing. A book uh, suggestion I have here is The Proximity Principle by Ken Coleman. Um, the sub, uh, subtitle for this, a proven strategy that will lead to the career you love. He's, he's very much talking about this from a career perspective, how to get a job that you want. Uh, and he's basically saying, as opposed to just putting in applications at places where, you know, anyone start to get to know the people, be around the people that you want to be. And again, I think from a location standpoint, that is go to where those people are, a music club or rehearsal space, whatever, um, you start doing what those people do. Uh, but the other thing is just create work, create content that those type of people would notice, but I think it's all going to be tied to serving. It's got to all be tied to that concept of you're doing it not to get to the next thing. But going back to the first B, you're just being present where you are. You're there with those people, but you're just present in that moment and serving them and seeing how you can help. And if they need more coffee, you go get them more coffee, whatever it is, all with the goal of just being present with them, serving them and being present where they are, because that's the type of person you want to be. OK, our third B, be the type of person that you'd want to be around. OK, that one's maybe too simplistic that that's easy to just kind of go right past you, but be the type of person that you'd want to be around. The way to network without being that guy is to not be that guy. And the way to not be that guy is to be the type of person and network in the type of way that you would want to be networked to. It's it's the 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 golden rule of networking. Network the way you would want to be networked to, right? Um be the type of person that you don't that you would want to be around and hang with. The book that came up uh, came to mind for me and some of you're going to roll your eyes when I mention this but bear with me is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Um I think I think this book is poorly titled because it gives you a sense of how to win friends and influence people gives you this kind of like ickiness because you're like, you're winning people, you're winning friends as opposed to just being friends and you're influencing people without always like, if anyone uh, ever says, Oh, this person's an influencer. There's always to me kind of a tinge of like, Ugh, like that just feels a little icky to me. So don't be turned off by the title of this book. This was a monumental book for me in reading it. One of the things I pulled out of it was this idea of I would feel a desire to correct people if they got something wrong um, or if they said something wrong. And it's not about like letting mistruth or misinformation get out there, but just this idea of like respecting people in the moment. You can even Google this book if you don't want to read the book. You could Google it and find Wikipedia. Uh, when I land on this page, I found a Wikipedia article that basically lays out the, I think it's 10 rules that he has for how to win friends and influence people, or at least shares a few of them. But I think this is a really good book um, that's going to help you a Along that journey. A couple of things I put serve. Number one, just the idea of like <clears throat> the way that uh, I, I want to work with people that are not going to want to work with me just because I may be able to give them this next opportunity. You can always kind of sense that. And again, going back to the beginning, you we've all been around that guy and the guy that's talking to you just because he thinks you can get him to the next person. Um, we know that feeling. So don't do that, right? Just serve. Uh, whatever you can do, carry keys, cases, carry, help set up gear, help tear down gear, get coffee, whatever it is, just serve, right? I think that's just like an entry basic level thing. And I don't care. We use the word serve a lot, like in the church orders or time about stuff. It's not a church word. It's like serve is in any field, right? Uh, if I'm in a band with a lot of folks, um, I want folks that are going to serve me and are going to help serve the greater purpose. Um, and that only works if we're all looking at it as putting someone else's needs before ours and serving them. I, I thought about this, though, particularly in a band world. Um, and I don't travel and I don't play in a band now. But I remember my days uh, being in a band and being in, in multiple bands. 
the people that stuck around were the people that were a good hang. And by that, I mean, the people that you got to think about when you're in a band, or you're on the road with people, 95% of the time, you're not doing the thing you're hired to do. If you're hired to be a guitar player on the road, 95% of your time, you're not going to be playing guitar on the road. 5% of the time, maybe if you're lucky, you'll be on stage playing guitar. You'll be on stage sound checking. you'll be on stage rehearsing. You'll be in a rehearsal studio rehearsing, but 95% of the time, you're going to be off stage. You're going to be talking about stuff. You're going to be eating food with people. You're going to be hanging out on a bus, crammed in a van, sleeping in a hotel room with someone else. And think about that. Like, how can you carry on conversations? What's your personality like? Are you an abrasive person? Are you someone that corrects everyone? Are you someone that brings up politics every moment of every day to just to discuss then you're probably not going to stick around for a long time unless I guess you find other people that have similar political views to you. And that's all you talk about all day long. Then maybe so, but you've got to think about the fact that 95% of the time, you're not going to be doing the thing you're hired to do. So um, you've got to be the type of person that you want to be around. Second thing, put others first. We talked about that. Just that idea of um, uh, put the success of other people in front of you. And I know that's easy for me to say in Austin, Texas, not being in LA and not being at a party where again, everyone looks at you and tries to, Uh, see what you can do for them. But I think you could be the odd person out. You could be the person that tries to put others first and serves the needs of an artist uh, first, as opposed to saying, I'm just going to do this gig so I can then get to that next gig. The other thing, and we've kind of, I've mentioned this throughout a few different um, uh, ways is just the idea of do good work. This is a concept my wife and I are trying to teach our kids now. And um, it's kind of a mystical kind of undefined thing, but you know what it is when you do it. And you know when you're not doing good work when you don't do it. You know what I mean? Like you, the idea of <clears throat> you get hired for a gig and um, your lack of preparation for that gig is, or, or your level of preparation is not what you want it to be. So because of that, you can look at that gig and you go, yeah, I didn't do good work on that one. That's, that's a gig where um, I should have done a lot better and I just did not do good work. I did not put others first. I did not serve very well that's definitely not a do good work kind of situation. So um, I think when it comes to networking and, and being able to network without being that guy, being able to network without feeling icky, I think there's three B's that we can apply that are really going to help. Number one, be present where you are. Number two, be present where the people you want to be are. And then three, be the type of person that you want to be around. And I think, honestly, I think if you could do those things, uh, then I think you're going to be able to network uh, without being that guy. And it's super important for us to network because the only way we're going to get our next job, our next opportunity is because of the people we know. And the only way we're going to get opportunities is because people we know provide those opportunities for us. No matter how talented we are, no matter how great we are at what we're doing, the the opportunities we have only come from the people we know. So um, take and apply these three things. I hope they help. Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, shoot me a message. I would love to know how do you practically network without being icky, without being that guy. Um, let the rest of us know so that we can be better at networking and we can network without being that guy. And finally, um, if you are interested in being a playback tech, being a music director, musician that uses Ableton Live on stage, um, head to from studio to stage.com slash free. I've got a bunch of free resources that are going to help you uh, make that happen. And if while you're there and you decide you want to subscribe, um, become part of the community, we would love to have you. But even if you don't, then we've got a bunch of free resources there for you that um, as you're learning how to use Ableton Live and use it on stage, I think will be super beneficial for you. So thanks so much for joining me for Behind the Space Bar. We'll see you next week, 10 a.m. Central. Uh, whether you're watching or listening to this, give us a thumbs up, a like, a whatever you do, wherever you are. Uh, and that would mean a lot. Leave a review if you're all over on Apple, iTunes, and podcasts. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. See you next Monday, 10 a.m. Central. Bye.